I hate to say it, but there is some really bad advice out there from some very high profile YouTubers. And I'm not one to throw shade or start any wars here, but the thing is, I don't want you to waste your time. So let me just say this. I truly believe that you should not start your guitar journey by memorizing the full major scales up and down the fretboard. Why? Because almost every student who wants to learn guitar wants to learn either rock and roll or blues or folk or country or pop music. And guess what? Those genres almost never use the full major scale. So why would you bother spending all that time memorizing and practicing a scale that you're almost never going to use? It's crazy. So if I was to relearn guitar again, what would I do? Well, I would do exactly what I've been teaching to all my students here for 14 years. And briefly, that looks like this. At the very beginning, we have to memorize all our open chords, what we call C, A, G, E, D. Then we've got to learn strumming technique and some of the most common strum patterns. There's really only a handful of them, and once you've got those, you're kind of good for all the others, like this one. Then we need our open chord variations, like some sevenths and some sus chords, and the variations for each of our C, A, G, E, D chords. Then I would memorize the notes on the low E and the A strings. Those are the only ones you really need to memorize because we're going to use those as landmarks to find whatever we need. So you got to know them and you got to know them right away. You got to know instantly that that's a B and that's a C sharp. And that helps us to be able to find our bar chords, which I will say is a big step for everyone. Just getting the physical skill of being able to play bar chords is actually quite tough. And along the way, we work on picking technique. We've got to be able to get the down up picking right and be able to calculate when we use strict down up picking and when we use perhaps like a roll and make that so automatic that we're really not thinking about it anytime we play something. So we've got some alternate picking under our belt. We're gonna learn the minor pentatonic easy shape. We always start with easy shape, why? Well, it's the best one. It's the one we use most often. So it's not just that it's easy, it's that it's most commonly used. And that's the point. We wanna focus on the things that are most commonly used so we're good at it and we can move forward faster. And then we just add the blue notes. And that's quite easy because we just memorize where they are positionally in the minor pentatonic scale. Now we want to be able to move up the fretboard a bit, so I usually just start with what I call the extension shape. It's the box, the house of blues people call it. Now we need some common licks. We can't just run our fingers over the scales alone. They've got to sound like music. So we can just memorize some of the really common licks depending on whether we want to learn blues or rock or country. It might be a different set of licks, but we need them to have them in our pocket. And of course, we need to learn how to use bends and pull-offs and hammer-ons. I usually kind of learn those along the way. And while you're doing all this, we have to also be able to play songs. So you've got to learn some songs. You've got to use the information because guitar is not just brain work. Really, the brain work is a smaller part of it. It's a lot more physical skill. And the only way we can get better at that is by playing a lot. Now I would say that is a very good list for someone who is, let's say, high beginner. Someone who definitely wants to learn electric guitar and be able to play solos. At that point, let's say we enter intermediate stage. I mean, where these exact levels are is it doesn't matter. But I think at this point, you could dive into any of the kind of lessons that I have here on my YouTube channel and in our Patreon group. And by the way, I'm going to put a complete checklist of all these types of things for free online that you can download. And you could use that checklist to figure out approximately where you think you are, but also, more importantly, what you think would be a good thing to learn next. The link to that checklist is below. So what do we do at an intermediate level? We want to be able to play minor pentatonic scales 
and major pentatonic scales, right? So it's not only about the bluesy minor pentatonic, we want that sweet major pentatonic sound as well. And we need to make sure that we can move up and down the fretboard in both minor pentatonic and major pentatonic. So we're going to spend time memorizing the shapes, but also not just memorizing the shapes, but getting physically good at them, right? We want to be able to move from here to here to here to here. Maybe at this point you add double stops in thirds or sixes. Both of those are important and can add a lot of depth to your solos, but also they're in so many songs. So if we get good at playing them and we understand them, then when we come across them in a song, the, the song is easy to play now. I focus a lot of my intermediate lessons on interval shapes, and once you start memorizing significant interval shapes, you'll see that really opens up how the fretboard works. It allows us to break out of those pentatonic boxes and hit the notes that are the sweetest notes at any given moment, like, say, a major third of D, way up there how about, or how about a minor seven of A. And those interval shapes allow us to do targeting, which means that we can think of the chord that's happening at that moment in the song, and we can hit or target a major third of that chord or a fifth of that chord or whatever it is. Like in my video from last week, we did fifths. And it's all related to arpeggios, right? Arpeggios are just notes of the chord. They are the intervals of that chord. And we can get those arpeggios from visualizing the chords or visualizing the, uh, the arpeggio shapes. And where, where do we use arpeggios? We can use them all the time when we're soloing. But again, they're in songs. They're in songs all the time. So when we see them in the tabs or we're reading tabs or listening to the song, we can just hear it and we can play it really quick. Arpeggios are everywhere. In fact, those are triads as well, right? Depending on whether I play the notes in succession or play them together, we can throw arpeggios or the triads hitting the chord in the middle of a solo. And again, there's so much use for triads also just as a rhythm guitar player. Now, more advanced techniques might include switching from major pentatonic to minor pentatonic in the middle of a solo. We can do that most often on the four chord. So we're listening for the chords, we're playing the sweep major pentatonic, that four chord comes and we switch to the minor pentatonic and it's got that cool bluesy rock and roll sound. <laughs> And another thing I love to teach is mixing, playing chords and scales at the same time. It's such a great sound. And too many guitar players get stuck in playing single notes, right? And chords at another time. But why don't we play them at the same time? Because we can. It's actually not as hard as it sounds. And don't forget, you need lots of exercises and songs that cover these things because, again, music is one part brain work, but many parts physical work, right? We need to have and develop the physical skill to be able to play these things. So it takes a lot of time. And even if you mastered all that stuff, you'll notice that I still haven't mentioned the full seven note major scales. Why? Because it's just not in a lot of music. In fact, if you really wanted to do the seven note scales, you'd probably be better off learning the Dorian mode because that's in a lot of classic rock. So let's get started. You can download that full checklist. The link is below. And there's lots of those intermediate levels right here on the channel. I'll put one of those videos right here on the screen for you. My name is Blue Morris and I teach guitar lessons here in Vancouver, Canada. I'll see you in the next one.